Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. I conf confused myself. I didn't bring up the normal graphic we had. So, yeah, sorry for jumping in and looking like a deer in the headlights, but I was wondering what was going on. So, yeah, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us wherever you may be across the world. Uh, we're live today on Serverless Office Hours, streaming on the AWS Twitch channel, YouTube Serverless Land, and also LinkedIn Live. Uh, my name is Julian Wood. I'm a developer advocate here for Serverless at AWS, and I'm super happy to be joined by two <coughs> super duper experts in the world of uh, serverless and specifically uh, .NET today. Uh, we've got Amir. Amir, how are you? I know you're based in London, so we're sort of in the same city. How have you managed to do awesome things with serverless? Yeah, thanks. Um, first of all, I'm really um excited to be here and talking about the lambda power tools and yeah it's it's uh, um i love serverless it's my area of focus for the last few years i would say and um i'm also be a dotnet developer for a very long time since the day one actually dotnet been released and uh, wow. and i love uh coding dotnets on serverless on aws thanks for cool, asking right. Excellent. And uh, Enrique, uh, welcome to Serverless Office Hours as well. Enrique, I know you're based in Portugal, but yeah, what is your journey to AWS serverless.net? Uh, yeah, tell us about yourself. Cool. Uh, th thanks for having me here, uh, Julian. Uh, uh, yeah, in terms of um, uh, .NET, uh, I've been, as well as Amir, I've, I've been using .NET from the early days. I, I even started uh, with VB.NET at the time, so and yeah. then obviously moved to, to C Sharp. Um, and um, in terms of serverless, uh, I think it's a very good uh, user experience, very fast to, to market uh, all your features. And since .NET is a very good language for that uh, and advocating for .NET on Lambda, I think it's a very powerful combination to for our users. Yeah. Excellent. Well, today we're going to find out a whole bunch of new things about how can .NET can be even easier with less code. But just before we get to that, um, yeah, just looking over the past week of serverless, the previous stream last week was a slightly different but super interesting one with uh, Dave Anderson, Michael O'Reilly, and Mark McCann. We're talking all about their uh, their book, The Value Flywheel Effect, and that's all about succeeding with serverless in an organization, what that means, how you can do things faster, what, uh, what the why you would do serverless first and a whole bunch of really sort of interesting uh, information. The book is obviously super useful itself if you want to use it as a reference. Um, but Dave, Michael and Mark were really cool and gave us some, uh, you know, an hour of their time to come and uh, explain all it uh, as well and give you some good tips and tricks on how you can really make uh, serverless succeed within your organization. In terms of what's new, well, it looks, if you just look down the list, you can see S3 has obviously had a busy week of knocking things out the park. Um, some interesting things just going from the bottom, S3 one, uh, S3 Object Lambda with CloudFront to tailor content. So that's really cool. S3 Object Lambda, if you're unaware, means you can pull something from S3 and you can have a Lambda function that runs in line, which can augment, can fix, can change, transform. Uh, transform, do anything with that object uh, as it comes through. And yeah, having that in CloudFront is super useful. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, S3 Mount Point as well, a high performance op uh, open source file client. So this is a file client that, you know, S3 is an object store. If you want to use and cheat maybe a little bit of S3 and use it as a file store, well, it doesn't have all the file of semantics, obviously, but this is a, a you know an op open source file client, which may be uh, useful for you. Uh, data exchange for S3, <clears throat> that's for getting third party data um, from um, other people who provide data, uh, super, super useful. And uh, the um, top two is about more sort of connectivity options with S3, with uh, you know um, sim simplifying the connectivity from, from on-prem networks. I believe that's also got maybe private DNS support, if I seem to remember. And then, uh, yeah, S3 multi-region access points. Uh, so also cross-account support for that. So anything more cross-account is always going to be useful. So yeah, well done, uh, uh, S3 team. That's a whole bunch of stuff that will hopefully be useful when you're building your serverless applications. Um, just looking at some of the recent uh, compute blog posts, um, where the uh, top one is super interesting from uh, Alexi about managing uh, anonymous users using WebSockets. So, you know, WebSockets is very common, uh, lots of different ways. And the next two up, we're actually going to be having on serverless op office hours um, shortly-ish about building Java applications with SAM CLI. And actually, the third one down, Luca Mazzilera, uh, one of our favorite people, is talking about server-side serverless front ends. And Luca's going to be talking to us next week with a whole bunch of other people. But that's the past week looking forward uh, to this week with uh, Amir and Henrique. We're talking about Lambda Power Tools for .NET. So, Amir, are you going to kick off? What is Power Tools? I'm not going to ask what is Lambda and what is .NET. I think we know what they are. But yeah, what is Power Tools and how does it help with .NET? Yeah, um, yeah Power Tools um, is 
an open source library actually is for helping um, developers to uh, develop uh, according to the best practices in the serverless. And the way it's going to work um, actually is by hiding away, abstracting away some of the difficulties that, uh, or some of the complexity of coding away from developers and give them meaningful uh, and easy to understand API. If you don't mind, I have a short prezzo that I can go through and so, yeah, there, bring are, it up. there are some uh, also fun stuff that I'm going to hand over to Henrik that's uh, going to show us some demo. Cool, Let's excellent. Yeah, see. and don't forget, because we're live here at Serverless Office Hours, please, uh, we are an hour early for the US colleagues, so hopefully you've woken up super early, or if you're watching the recording afterwards, hello, hello. Yes, time zones across the different worlds. So, sorry, US time is correct, uh, well, for this streaming, but it means anyone in Europe and other kind of places is an hour earlier. So if you did miss it, I'm so sorry, time zones. We'll be back to normal uh, next week. But big point is we're live, so send us your questions and your comments via the chat. Even let us know where you are. Tell us what you love about .NET, and we'll be happy to, to answer them. Awesome. Can everyone see that? Can you see Yes, that? we can. Perfect. Let's go for it. Uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk, we are going to talk about actually um, Lambda Power Tools for .NET. Just let's quickly have a look at the agenda. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about like the how, overview of the AWS Lambda Power Tools uh, as a whole and a bit of background and how we can use it and how it's helpful. And then I'm going to focus on some of the key features of AWS Lambda Power Tools for .NET, specifically some core utilities we released like logging, tracing, and metrics. And then I'm going to hand it over to Henrik to do some cool stuff and showing you how you can get hands-on with the code. Excellent. A little bit of background. Uh, if you have a serverless workload, you're probably familiar with the serverless lens in well architected tool. But uh, it's just a tool to which enable actually customers to use um, and access to use it to assess their architecture and um, compare it against the best practices that we've seen. We work during those years. We work with the customer. We've seen around the world, and. Um, in terms of the background, it's been actually been there since like 2017, but it was as a sort of a collection of questions and some white papers, which was great, but the customer would actually love to benchmark that, get the reports out of it, uh, track their progress. So we actually, in early 2020, it's been launched as a part of the, uh, well, um, as a part of the well architected tool into the console. Um, that was great, um, but after six months, we've been launched. As more than ten thousands of customers went through that, we reviewed uh, the, the we reviewed all of the results, and we found something interesting. That the three of the hardest question was around distributed tracing. How how can I add a distributed tracing? I'm not I'm not interested in just only enabling them, right? I just want to instrument my code. I have. A, I want to have a full end-to-end -end tracing. And in terms of the, how do I do a structure logging and how I can create metrics, either business or infrastructure, um, I would like to have, um, be able to use the analyze tools and that know where exactly my problem is. Um, having, reviewing all of those questions, actually we found that there are like some complexity of implementing those as a part of the best practices um, in the in the source code. And it was more problem related not to the infrastructure, but more was a runtime related uh, problems. So all of that disconnection and all of that complexity, it lead us to AWS Lambda Power Tools. Let's have a look what is AWS Lambda Power Tools. Uh, AWS Lambda Power Tools is a, a, suite of a suite of utilities, actually, that can um, help you or ease adopting the best practices, such as tracing or structure logging or custom metrics and many more. These are the, the things actually rely to those questions we, we discussed earlier. The way it does, it's just abstract away on differentiated heavy lifting and, on, and make you free of writing unnecessary of custom codes and uh, provide a very easy to understand and clear API. Um, 
it's also um, available in some other languages. It initially was in Python. Uh, it's also available in Java and TypeScript. And the latest uh, of the family is .NET that we are here to talk about and present. Yeah, I sort of I love this idea of power tools. Even since you know the original Python one came out, the whole idea of <clears throat> not just providing utilities that are useful because you know there are so many libraries and modules and things like that but really tying it up to that tying it back to that well architected goodness because i think well architected is sometimes a something that people don't necessarily i think grasp the importance of and you know well architect is simply the best practices that aws recognizes and sees and but when you're building serverless applications some of those best practices are going to be a little different from when you're building your normal applications and we've literally codified that into a whole huge white paper um which has you know what six, six different pillars and all the different questions which ask how do you do this how do you do that or are you doing this are you are you doing that but obviously a lot of that um relies on you having to code things like uh, logs and metrics and tracing, which you're going to talk about. And, you know, I think it's amazing that we've tied this power tools back to that well-architected thing. It's just, just not just a whole bunch of separate utilities for doing things, but it's particularly for serverless. It is particularly for uh, for Lambda. And yeah, really, really makes a, makes a difference. So if you haven't looked at your application from a well-architected point of view, I'd really encourage you to start looking at that because from operation, uh, um, running your uh, service in, uh, you know, live in production from an operational standpoint, you know, the well architected stuff is just going to mean that you are ticking a whole bunch of boxes, that it's going to be scalable, it's going to be secure, it's going to be performant and reliable and uh, all those good things. So that was my little just uh, opinion piece because I, I think it's super great. Perfect. Thanks, Julian. Um, uh, cool. Um, we initially released that in three core utilities. Um, the logging um, is aligned to the to the logging questions. Actually, is like the, some of the key feature is it it has an output log as a, a struct um, as a structured JSON. Uh, it automatically captures some of the some of the fields inside the Lambda context. Uh, there are some also some uh, availability in terms of some functionality in terms of uh, if you want to do some samplings um, in regard that if you, for example, if you are running a production in uh, workload production and what you want to do, you want to do some samplings and make your log level from information to, for example, to debug, to have some observation around your network traffic and or your workload, you can do that. Uh, in terms of uh, training, is a thin wrapper um, or um, opinionated wrapper around AWS X-Ray SDK for .NET. Obviously, you can go and do it yourself, but it's here to hide away all of those complexity we discussed. It does feature something like um, uh, auto capture the cold start as annotation. Um, it gives you a good uh, experience if you are using multi-threading. It supports that. It's also automatically disabled itself when you're running as a test, for example, outside of your Lambda environment. In terms of the metrics, um, the cool feature about that is actually is using um, EMF, which is embedded metrics formats. If you if you ever try, for example, to push some metrics data or use an API to, for example, put metrics data to the CloudWatch, um, there are some factor of costs to it and also latency. For example, you have to pay a dollar cents per, for example, 1,000 API call you do. Or also, your Lambda uh, needs to wait for the API call to finish before being able to execute. That With that, uh, adopting EMF, you simply log in a specific format, and that's being going to be uh, captured as your metrics. So, that, so the EMF is going to speed up your Lambda functions because it's an async process. And you sort of get the metrics for free. The metrics are just automatically generated for CloudWatch metrics from your logs. You're not even having to write to the uh, CloudWatch put metrics API. That's correct. Sounds like a winner. <laughs> uh, we're going to see some example of that later. Um, <clears throat> And this is just like a, a code snippet. In terms of the logging, you can see how easy is that. You just add some attributes. Um, I, I put it on top of the handler. And what it does is, as you can see, it just simply capture the all information inside the Lambda context. Um, and, and also, I pass an optional parameter to capture the coloration ID from the API gateway. And it's also captured the coloration ID for me. It's as easy as that. Uh, 
metric similar, you can add, um, start using the attribute based metrics and, and pass, for example, this particular one, uh, start capturing the cold start. As you see, it, it does uh, create the metrics in an EMF format for you. And um, you can see it's captured also the cold start. So this is not just for your custom metrics or the platform met metrics. It's actually got both that you could just put in a really simple uh, exactly. metrics line. Yeah. You can, yeah. Yes. You can add also, you can add, for example, business metrics, like for example, the churn rate or uh, the, as you see in this example, car checkout, like you can make <clears throat> business analysis and business uh, investigation based on the metrics you push to the CloudWatch. Um, and the tracing um, as well, we just enable the tracing. There are two, um, two uh, one handler and one um, private function. It supports both think and async, and uh, it's going to create a separate segment for the second function, and you can easily uh, track it inside um, uh, X-Ray. And some of the toolings available, um, it's not just like, you just add it and use it. There are some tooling and templates available for you to get your uh, your hands on, um, be hands on, and get your hands dirty on that. There are uh, we have a template for Visual Studio Toolkit um, that you can use, and also AWS SAM CLI uh, has a support for that. Uh, hopefully, we have time to 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 see it today. I think talking is enough. Um, now I'm go oh, sorry. This is. I was one slight. Okay, Sam CLI. Uh, now talking is enough. I'm gonna pass it to Henrik to get some hands-on and demo. hands-on demos. We always like hands-on demos. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, let me present my screen. Stop sharing. So yeah, remember <clears throat> any questions or comments, um, you know, let us know. Uh, you know, even if .NET is not necessarily your language of choice, remember there is power tools for also Java, uh, Python, TypeScript, and JavaScript as well. I'm sure, I've missed out another one. Maybe that's .NET. But it, anyway, but, but there are power tools libraries for a whole bunch of different languages. So even the functionality uh, that that you're looking here today, even if you're not a .NET developer, you know, the other languages have got similar functionality and also some other uh, additional utilities as well. Each language is sort of slightly different in what they have, but the sort of three core ones are the tracing metrics and uh, logging, the sort of observability trifecta, maybe, uh, they're in all of them. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. And yeah, mo most of the languages as well support uh, what we're about to show using SAM CLI. Uh, obviously, the Visual Studio Toolkit is just for .NET as well as the .NET CLI. Um, essentially, we're going to start with an um, empty canvas, a Hello World application, and then we're going to evolve and keep adding features to, to this application. Uh, the way we created was with um, SAM init. And uh, I'm not, go not going to create, but just going to show you the steps we took for that. Um, and to show you that option seven as well has included the uh, uh, Lambda Power Tools. So if you want to get started and already have Lambda Power Pool uh, Tools, uh, you get packages and a simple Hello World application, you can do so uh, if you choose step um, seven. Uh, I chose step one and I'm not going to use Python. I'm going to choose option two, .NET 6 and uh, a zip image uh, for now since we're starting from scratch i'm not gonna add x-ray not uh, insights as well and you just give a project name and then it uh, starts um, so i'm gonna quit this and i'm gonna open visual studio uh, which is let me just hide the sharing sorry it was on the, on the way and where's my visual studio Uh, where are you? Sorry. It's the live demos. Always things happen. Yeah. Things go to the wrong screens or, or crash. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Oh, there we go. Cool. Uh, yeah, and it creates this uh, application. 
So the way we're going to start is so this, this is the application, the SAM in it without doing without any power tools added. Exactly. So you're literally yeah, starting from vanilla as if you've never heard power tools before. This is what you can use. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So this is starting. Uh, I've also uh, go get ahead and uh, deployed uh, this application, so it's already running, and I'm using a cool feature for SAM CLI, which is SAM Sync. So any changes I'm doing in the code, it automatically deploys the Lambda function. Everything is uh, up and running as well. Um, so essentially, in terms of getting started, if, if you were just starting and you wanted to lock something uh, with Lambda, uh, the way we, you would do is add a simple uh, logger, right? So you could come here and just say, OK, add a Lambda logger. And this comes in built in. You don't need to add any new get packages. And it just logs. It's going to log. Uh, as a string, right? So if I save, uh, you're going to see some action here below, and it's going to deploy the application. And uh, once we hit the endpoint, we're going to see that the, the application is logging, but just a string. The the benefits of Power Tools, and obviously the bigger picture of structured logging, is the ability to log uh, structured structuredly, uh, which allows you not to be uh, only visible, uh, better visibility, but also uh, querying, right? So you can then use um, uh, insights uh, on the AWS console to query those logs based on those uh, properties. And uh, as soon as I uh, push this, I can now go to my browser and we're going to see, I'm uh, not sure what's going on with this screen, it's sending it to the other screen. Here it is. Uh, my application here is running, so it's a simple Hello World application, uh, which runs. And then we can go to our CloudWatch, uh, redo the query here. Just double check that it's the correct time, this one. And we are going to see that uh, we have a log. Obviously, it's a simple string. Uh, this is not useful. Uh, what you would do as a .NET developer, uh, usually you would use tools like uh, Serilog to get the structure logging, and you can do it in Lambda as well. Uh, I went ahead and already added the Serilog packages you might need. So um, extensions, configurations to get the app settings JSON and read it. And then the Serilog uh, syncs for the console and the other features that you, that you might need. And if you go ahead, and you want to add, let me just copy a snippet I have here. Uh, this is what you do to add Serilog. So you add Microsoft configuration and Serilog, whoops, sorry, not this one. And Serilog. And, so if we did this, we could then uh, start using and seeing structured logging in um, our logs. So what I'm going to do is comment this out, and I'm going to log. Uh, Serilog has a, a interesting uh, way of doing things. So if you add the uh, add sign here, you could uh, log the whole object. It doesn't stringify it, let's go like that, but it puts the whole object, and then uh, on the logs, Lambda sees that and puts it as an object. It will create the properties um, object there then and the properties will be below that so if we go again and query our example uh, we're gonna see here that 24 this one we're gonna see that we're gonna start seeing uh, something more interesting right so our logs are in a structured fashion and as I mentioned a serial log puts it in a properties uh, property bucket and then the name of the variable and the values. And obviously this allows you then to go to the logs insights and query on these values much more than you could do with just a, a simple string, right? So in this case, uh, hopefully it's already there. Let me just double check. already here no it's not here it takes a little bit to get here but i'll, yeah. I'll move on but you could could, could query there and um, uh, and this is how you would add uh, most people are familiar with serilog on the dotnet world it's one of the tools you use 
the most for, for structure logging. It can be console. For Lambda, obviously, you just output to the console, but it could be files, etc. And uh, with Serilog, you saw me adding a couple of things here, right? So in the constructor, uh, we have to read from the config. Um, uh, or you can do it without config, but uh, best practice is you read from the config. And then you have to set up uh, the configuration and all of that. Uh, it's it's a traditional approach, but I think we can do better and we let's code uh, with uh, Lambda Power Tools. So what I'm going to do is comment out this code and remove what I've added here. And I'm going to now add Lambda Power Tools. Again, I've already got ahead and added the NuGet packages, uh, which are these three, right? So you could only pick and choose what you want. So if you just want to have logging, you just import the, the logging or the metrics or the tracing, you, you, your choice uh, to use. In my example, I'm going to use all of them. And um, what, oops, I think I removed more than I had to, uh, yep, just this. And remove this. Cool. And now adding um, Lambda Power Tools. The, the way we start is with the logging, right? So we're going to add logging. Um, we just need to add an annotation, right? The way we built it is uh, simple as adding annotations to your uh, classes. So we're going to add the logging annotation. And you see it prompts you to, to add Power Tools uh, logging. And we go ahead and do that. Um, and then we will uh, log the, the information, right? So uh, the same way as we did before, we can just go here and log that information. Uh, you've already seen this. I'm not going to do it again. What I'm going to do is an extra features that uh, Lambda Power Tools uh, allows you to do. So for instance, if um, on most common cases, you want to know uh, what was the payload that triggered your Lambda function, right? So if you want to have that, you, you can do it here in code, but you can also do it uh, on the template configuration that I'm going to change later on. But if, if you want, you just say log event equals, equals true, right? And in this case, we're going to start logging the events that come in, and you're going to have two different entries on the uh, uh, logging, one for your payloads and the other one for the payloads that got that called your uh, your Lambda function, right? So with, with this, I would get that information. I'll go one step further, and in my scenario, I'm going to also add a feature we have. You can append new keys. Uh, if you if you look at the JSON property, it's like we have a new property. And in this case, I'm just going to add a property called location. And then I'm going to call login information. And everything is set up to use Lambda Power Tools. The other thing I'm, I'm missing here is the configuration itself. right? So to, to add Lambda Power Tools, you will have to set up uh, environment variables or in code. Uh, again, we prefer with environment variables. You could do it in the globals or per resource. It's, it's really up to you. In this scenario, I'm going to use the, the globals to, to do that. And these variables define uh, what is the service name uh, of uh, this Lambda function that's running. Uh, the log level, as well as the casing. You have camel case, Pascal case. Uh, you can choose the casing you want for, for your logs. And I'm going to hit save. Uh, save on this again. Yeah, just to want to jump in. I, somehow I disappeared a few minutes ago. Uh, who knows Who knows what happens? The vagaries of um, uh, the demo gods going strange. <clears throat> but he also just pointing down at the bottom of the screen, watching the SAM accelerate. It is amazing how quick that is just updating each time you're saving. It's doing the rebuild, yeah. syncing it up to the cloud, uh, syncing it up to the cloud. So if you are used to doing, you know, your normal development in your IDE of choice, you know, this is just an amazing feature just to be able to quickly iterate and yeah, get going. So I just wanted to call out that if people are watching at the bottom wondering what is going on, that's the magic of Sam Accelerate. Just on a file save, you're not actually having to deploy. I'm not deploying yet. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just hitting save. Uh, this one is taking longer because if you change the template, it's going to yeah. be it's the infrastructure, right? It's going to uh, deploy the, the infrastructure and all the settings. But in terms of code, it's it's really very fast. So it has deployed. Uh, let's go to our browser again. Let me just do a little refresh here. Um, so as you noticed, obviously, uh, the infrastructure was deployed. Lambda had a cold start. And that's another thing that uh, Lambda Power Tools 
can give you is uh, automatically cold start uh, logging. So you can see which function had cold start or not, and you can have nice uh, charts uh, on those metrics as well, on those logs. So uh, if I go here to the logs and... And if you go to one of the log, on the second of this one. So this is what, uh, uh, without changing most anything, what Power Tools gives you. As you can see, it's the cold start uh, metric here. Everything is uh, obviously structured logging. Uh, X-ray trace ID, the location, which was my new property I added with the add key, right? So location has my, ID, uh, my IP address. And um, yeah, what was a function, uh, Aaron that called it, memory size so all of this uh, information you get it and obviously the the message that that we logged and the other cool thing is because i enabled the log events true i also get another payload which tells me what triggered my lambda function right and this is also very valuable information let's say if you have a, coming from an sqsq or uh, in this case api gateway but any other mechanisms you get the information uh, here and it gives you a lot of things, right? So even um, uh, what was the, the browser, the operating system. So all of those things you are expected to see HTTP uh, flowing, you will get all those metrics here, uh, those uh, logs here. And um, yeah, I think it's very cool. And we just literally added uh, log events true and we get all of this for free. Uh, without, <clears throat> without doing much effort, right? So it goes all yeah, so, the... So that's super useful in your development. Obviously, you do need to think about this in a production environment when you're now maybe logging personal information or exactly. PII. <clears throat> so obviously, you need to think about that. Yeah, but just in a single line to go, oh, I want... I mean, often when you're building Lambda functions, you just want to look at your event object to know what you can manipulate and work on. Yeah, one line, there you go. Yeah, perfect, exactly. Uh, and that, that's curious, you, you uh, mentioned that as well. It's something that... Um, we are working uh, with the uh, Lambda team to tackle the, the PII. I, there is an issue if you go to the um, uh, Lambda Power Tools for Python, uh, Ator, which is one of the, well, the, the person who created Lambda Power Tools. Uh, we are very engaged with Lambda teams to, to see how we can tackle, uh, obviously, the, yeah. that confidential information and all of that. So if you want to contribute or have a look at the discussion, uh, go to the Python um, repo there's a good discussion there going on around um yeah and, and it's worth mentioning that all of power tools all of the power tools are open source as well and yep. so yeah really you know it's a it's a super engaged team as you as you can uh, uh, as you can hear so yeah if you're you know comments questions uh, you know suggestions heck even your own code that'll be all that'll be awesome to um uh, to make it even better for everyone yeah exactly exactly so i will try and query again just to see if i can get an example here uh, the last logs, yeah, I can probably get this one. Uh, yep. Smallest one. I just want to add things to it, <clears throat> um, Henrik. It says um, the the message itself for the log uh, does not necessarily need to be a string. You can you can you can log an object and you get the JSON serialization of that message as well. Yeah, exactly. And. You can also obviously filter by, uh, I don't know what the IP is, but if you want, you can go based on that property I added, I can go here and obviously uh, filter out by that event. And that will filter all the events based on that property, which match that IP address. And mm -hmm. it gives you a nice querying capabilities uh, on top of that. Yeah, and even just to reiterate, you may have mentioned this somehow, but uh, Julian, I think we we You're... yeah losing you on the sound. I think it was a, a bump again. <laughs> Does that work a little bit better? My... Yes. You're You're back. Back. <sighs> Who knows? Uh, yeah, I was just uh, then I lost my train of thought. I will think about it. Sorry about that. I will. Um... No, no problem. No problem. Cool. So the and the next step is obviously adding tracing, which I think is one of the coolest features we mentioned in the beginning. Distribute tracing, one of the biggest challenges on obviously uh, not just only cloud native, but if you have a microservices or many systems communicating, you want 
traceability with all of them, right? And the way you can do that, obviously, you know, the theme now is just adding tracing <coughs> to our um, to our application. And then we add the tracing package. And well, you would be done, but I'm going to go a, a, an extra step. And what I'm going to do is also add on the, this method calls another, uh, this main handler calls a method, and I'm going to add a decorator here as well, so we can see it on the um, waterfall. We can see what's been uh, called, and I'm going to, that's, we're going to create a new segment. I'm going to put it here. Call the service, right, like this. And what I'm going to add, uh, yeah, let's add it on this one. I'm going to add, again, same thing, adding an annotation or like we added in the logs, uh, uh, an extra key. We can also add annotations. So I'm going to add an annotation for um, this one, let's say CT London, right? I can do uh, mostly whatever I, I want here. And I'm going to click Save. Uh, one thing I missed, obviously, is if you're going to enable tracing, uh, you have to um, enable it in the template as well, right? So otherwise, the Lambda function won't be able. You can do it through the, the AWS CLI, but you, you, if you're using SAM CLI, you can do it here on a very uh, easy fashion, right? So you just say tracing active, and you click Save. You're going to see below the infrastructure is going to be deployed because I, I changed it here. and also, some properties for the tracing, as we added for the logging. We also are going to add for the tracing. Just wait for this to to deploy. And I think Julian, uh, yeah, might have some issues again. No worries. We'll we'll take care of it. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions uh, while this is uh, building? Uh, I can't see the chat. Let me see. I think you haven't saved your YAML file. Ah, uh, I'm waiting on this one here. Yeah. yeah, okay. To to deploy. Do do you have any questions, Amir? I I can't I see the chat. Let's see if the I don't see anything on the chat. Yeah, uh, the talk will be recorded and will be available afterward. One question I have. Cool. Yeah, so essentially what this is doing now is um, deploying the infrastructure for the Lambda function, having the tracing enabled, also setting these two <coughs> uh, environment variables. And it's done. And I'm going to save this as well, just to make sure. And it's finished, so I'm going to go here. Uh, same thing, just refresh this so we have a new request coming in. And we'll go not for the logs, but for the tracing. And you're going to see that we have one tracing, so I did one request. And what we get is automatically this configuration, right? So we know what was called and gives us a service map of the, the request, distributed tracing, right? So if you had uh, calling S3 or an external API uh, like we have, you would then uh, add the distributed tracing as well. And this gives you a nice waterfall of uh, the events that come up. And um, this is the return of the function. If we go to the annotations, we're going to see that it automatically gets annotated for cold start true. And this gives you, again, the possibility to uh, filter tracings based on annotations and gives you as well the metadata, which is the, the return, right? So this is what was returned by this method here. And if you recall, I added a, trace, um, a tracer add annotation to this method here. And this will then have an annotation of CT London, which is the, the thing I wrote uh, here, right? So add annotation. So each method you can have annotations, and then it gets uh, put here on the annotations. And again, you can query uh, on those annotations. So yeah, with those uh, 
three lines of code, I can have uh, tracing enabled, everything set up, all of this, as well as annotations and the metadata for my methods or uh, the whole handler as well. Uh, Robin asked if it's uh, the tracing and logging uh, need much processing um, of Lambda, they need to change or increase their uh, memory and timeout. It shouldn't, uh, but they always test that. Depends on how small your Lambda by the shouldn't. It usually is pretty fast. And um, some of the extraction is usually happen only at, uh, at the cold start. Yeah. Uh, there's also a repo uh, uh, I'll share with Julian afterwards. It's um, also a colleague of ours that does very good YouTube videos as well, uh, which uh, it has a repo on the performance um, in all this and adding Lambda Power Tools, it, the, it, it really doesn't impact much on, on the performance of the application. But again, really depends on what you're doing and what good performance is for you, right? If you, one millisecond counts, obviously it's it's it probably not ideal, right? So it's something that you have to measure and it's per use case scenario. Thanks, Cam. I think I'm back. Oh, who knows? The gremlins are creeping into the system today. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay Betchi, I think that's your name. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, Twitch here. Yeah. How, how can you configure tracing to capture RDS queries or external HTTP calls using the annotation? I suppose this is the bigger question of, you know, anything that's external or how do you, you know, how do you break up your segments and sub segments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to go, Amir? Yeah. Yes, I can answer that. Uh, technically, you can instrument all of your external API calls with one um, uh, with one um, SDK uh, call. Should be part of a documentation, but you can auto instrument all of that if you want. If you have any external calls, it's going to be captured as a part of like. Uh, API call to the external service is nothing not necessarily related to the because because tracing power tool tracing use X-ray underneath and it's is a it's a functionality as X-ray provides and with the SDK you can enable all or you can enable um, uh, some of that um, optionally but you there there is a SDK functionality which I don't recall now you can just call it and say, I want to instrument all external calls, and it's going to be captured as a part of the uh, X-ray tracing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you need to do inside inside the code, you need to add attribute on top of the nested calls you, you do, and it's going to create a separate nested section under your um, under your under uh, the main section, yeah. segment. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, so this isn't specific to uh, to Power Tools. Just using X-ray under the hood. So any service that does X-ray, I mean, even cool things like um, SQS and uh, Lambda, you know, integrates much better. And I know the SQS, uh, the X-ray team, SQS as well, but X-ray team are also, you know, pushing hard to have more um, traceability between various different applications. So you know, as soon as they become available, um, that's also going to be available from within your code or from yeah. within the traces from within your code. And then I'm not sure if you covered it. You know that that's just the trace waterfall view, but also the really nice sort of service map. I think I briefly saw that over there. That is also super useful for being able to look at your your application architecture and if you're having any issues as well. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and just to yeah. check, yeah, the service map is actually a, probably a better view than the X-ray console as well. So the service the service map is a sort of more aggregated view, which is uh, you know not just looking at the X-ray service, could, but can pull in some metrics from other, other places. So. Yeah, if you, if you didn't know about the, the service lens console or the service lens part of um, uh, the CloudWatch console, that's a good that's a good one to use. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, I, I, while we were talking, I was just pointing out to our documentation, which uh, refers to exactly that, right? So uh, instrumenting the SDK clients, uh, you could use this uh, command on your constructor, in, in this case, on your Lambda constructor, uh, and this will instrument all the um, SDK, AWS SDK clients or HTTP calls. Uh, you, if you go here to the documentation as well, uh, you're gonna see somewhere and this guy, uh, HTTP client X-ray tracing handler. We could also uh, enable that as well. Okay, yeah, Jebeki, uh, I know there was a follow-on question, but I think we think we covered that as well. So. Um... Uh, yeah, hopefully that uh, uh, explanation shows that. I have also put a link to the documentation in the in the chat. So if you are hunting around for it, it should be clickable from there. 
Cool. So yeah, that's tracing. I think it's the most uh, in exciting uh, part uh, because it's too easy to it's it's, it's it's too too easy, right? It it doesn't look real, but it is. Yeah. So you just add that. Uh, the last part is uh, the metrics, um, as important, uh, but something that uh, it's more common to to, to see uh, um, working. So. Again, we just need to change the, the template and add metrics specific uh, configuration. And in this case, I'm just going to add the, the namespace to here, right? So, and again, if I click save, this is going to boot my infrastructure for this Lambda function. And same thing, add the metrics. <clears throat> here, metrics, and we could Again, through code or through uh, the environment variables, uh, we can add uh, something like uh, capture called starts equals true, and the metrics will add um, a, a metric on cold starts. And you can then uh, see uh, the number of currencies of cold starts, have charts on top of that, so everything, or uh, alarms, etc. So you can set all that up. And the final part, I believe Amir also uh, showed in the in the presentation, is to add a metric. You can have for uh, let me put on here. Uh, we can have for any custom business logic or metrics that we we want to to take into account. And this is the number of times I call this uh, API, uh, and that's it. So I just added metrics. And um, oh, add mutation and add that logic to add a custom metric. If I go back to my browser and refresh this again, uh, we're going to see here in the metrics. Um, it's not here yet. Okay, serverless office hours. And if you go here, we're going to see the two metrics. So, so location service call and the call starts. Uh, this probably going to show just two dots here, or you're probably not going to even see them. But uh, yeah, it's here. You can see, obviously, the number of requests will improve these metrics, right? But uh, as easy as that, and you have metrics of cold starts as well as custom business logic uh, if you want to add. And um, I think it's, is yeah. it up to a hundred metrics you can add per, I think it's something like a hundred metrics you can add. So yeah, feel free, use them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, just to finalize, I'm going to back, go back to the terminal uh, since I, I showed those features is to show uh, we only saw SAM CLI and, and I, I can't show you the Visual Studio Toolkit uh, on my Mac because I don't have Visual Studio here. But if you are a .NET developer familiar with the .NET tool, we also have uh, the .NET new, which you can install the templates. And if you do a .NET new list, if um, the size is good, yeah, you are going to see that we have serverless power tools here and Lambda power tools. And the same thing, same experience as MCLI, you just do .NET new. Uh, Lambda Power Tools, and it comes baked in with logging, tracing, metrics, and you can add or remove or change whatever you want, but you have these templates available. Uh, if you don't use SAM CLI, use .NET um, uh, CLI. Is there any, any difference between the Lambda Power Tools and the serverless Power Tools? Uh, the Lambda is really just a function handler, uh, simple, okay. and the serverless includes the API gateway. That's, that's the main okay. difference of, of both of them, yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, as for the demo, um, that was it. I, I don't know, Amir, if we yeah, something to add or something to show, but I think it's we showed all the features. I think. No, that was great. We discussed also is available in a SAM CLI, as you mentioned. It's just few commands. You can have all of the thing actually Enrique added manually. You can have it like few lines of commands. You can get it ready to go boiler um, uh, boilerplate. You just can deploy it. So all, all the sort of different ways you can then add power tools to your um, to your uh, application. One is via pulling in the NuGet packages. 
Um, but I know there are also Lambda layers available. Are they available for .NET, or is that actually better just to um, pull in the in the Power Tools as part of the the .NET actual package? Uh, no, the Lambda for the because of the nature of uh, the .NET, uh, Lambda layers doesn't add that much value to that. But it, yeah. no, the answer to that is no. Um, uh, it's not like Python that you can add uh, different layers. Um, it's just NuGet packages you can add. Yeah, so because you are compiling things, you know, uh, yes. you're not gonna, yeah. you can't run and compile things at runtime. So I just, yeah, for some people who have seen uh, that deployment uh, mechanism either via layers or other kind of things, uh, you know, with a compiled language, that's not not really gonna, well, won't, won't work in the same way. So, yeah. But anyway, I think that's how. I mean, that's how .NET developers, uh, you know, code anyway. Um, you know, it's you know, different languages have their different dependency mechanisms. So, you know, you've got Node and Python on the one side where, uh, you know, you've got your packages and your Node modules, and that's, you know, done in a different way that you can just uh, stick layers in there and it's going to be really easy to share that. Share that. Um, but yeah, you know, things like Java and, and .NET and uh, well, obviously fully compiled like Go, you just pull the packages in and, uh, and you're done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, in terms of sort of, uh, I know the this has just been GA, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, you know what what kind of what other kind of things are we looking forward to uh, doing in the future? I know some of the other uh, power tools have some other utilities as well. Um, you know, this has just become GA. What what is the team sort of looking to do in in the future? And also, what kind of feedback would you be looking from the community to try and uh, you know either drive the direction or find out how power tools for .NET works at the moment? Okay, I can um, answer that. Uh, we are actually um, the some of the the features we are actually working on that, and also we are thinking of uh, because if you think as a Python as um, a first child of this family, um, uh, we are trying to see Power Tools as a kind of one product with uh, mul uh, supporting multiple languages. So we try to do some parity check we know like the dotnet has its own requirements as well but uh, each each runtime has its own requirement but we do some parity check what we have currently in pipeline without like promising uh, the time for the release but uh, we have for example parameters um which is in the in the, in the pr uh, we also have idempotency working on it um but uh, they're also in pr we don't know when it get merged and maybe going to be a beta version then uh, GA version. Yeah. Um, yeah, technically, it's going to be like a kind of parity check compared to what we are missing, what are the gaps compared to the like um, um, uh, Java, for example, or Python. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna follow that path. Of course, we're gonna get feedback. We already have a lot of feedbacks from community. The people are still raising tickets, and we're also gonna consider them for the prioritizing. Um, as a as an influencing factor for prioritizing our roadmap for delivering. Yeah, so in in a way, the GA is sort of just the beginning. You know, there's a whole yeah. there's a whole bunch of great ideas, and you exactly. know, I think we'd all value your feedback. Yeah. Uh, I want to add uh, one thing as well. So, uh, as part of my team, uh, the DevAx uh, team here at at LWS, we we also uh, do customer interviews. So, if you have a Lambda workload uh, and you're interested in Power Tools, or you're interested in observability on your Lambdas, uh, you can also reach out uh, to me or our team, and we can help you with that as well. And we do those interviews to also get feedback and to guide the direction of the, the product and the service itself, right? So not only, like Amir mentioned, the feedback we get on issues on GitHub, because this is all open source, as mentioned, uh, we also want to do customer interviews to get feedback from people using this in the real world and uh, get some insights on how to improve, uh, etc. Ah, oh, perfect. And uh, yeah, Enrique, I've, I've, um, you, the contact details via Twitter and LinkedIn are in the the show notes on all three of the platforms we're streaming on. <clears throat> so that's also a way to get hold of you, or get get hold of me, and I will um can pass you on to to Enrique and Amir. Uh, we also have uh, communication channels, um, Discord. We can we can share it. Oh, um, yes. Then, um, uh, if you have anything, you can just chat with us. Just put whatever you like, and uh, we try to be as responsive as possible. Um, and um, we got like a few questions at the beginning, people how just want to configure it and things like that at the time we went GA, but that's a good way of communication as well. 
Okay. Oh, excellent. I had forgotten about the Discord channel. Here, here my thinking via um, the, the old school ways and I'll pass it on. We've got Discord, you know, <laughs> you can do things in a more in a more modern way. Um, <clears throat> when Rick and Amir, yeah, really appreciate Thank you for your time. I mean, anything else you'd like to talk about, e even any other interesting projects you're working on or, uh, you know, certainly .NET things, uh, what can we look forward to, to, uh, to interesting things in the future? Yeah, so f for me, the most interesting part on .NET is uh, AOT, right? Once Microsoft gets that out of the door in GA fashion, I think we're going to see a massive adoption of .NET on Lambda or serverless. So because ahead of time is going to reduce a lot of the main complaint of the cold starts, right? So I think yeah. in terms of future of .NET, I think that's that's a very good thing we're going to be having in probably September, October this year. Let's see. Excellent. Yeah, good call out. Now, I know we've, we've done a serverless office hours beforehand. Just look on the channel with James Eastham doing um, .NET 7, which uh, isn't a managed runtime because it's not a long-term support, but you can do all the AOT and just-in-time uh, compilation with uh, uh, .NET 7. Uh, so James has got a whole bunch of information to, to help you do that as well. Excellent. Well, <clears throat> thank you so much. <clears throat> in terms of coding and things, remember, you don't have to go it all alone. Uh, serverless land is our, um, well, I'll jump to this one first, actually. Oop, wrong one. Uh, jump to serverless land. And this is, you know, everything to do about serverless on AWS. We've got learning paths, a new event driven architecture section, plans for many more. You know, we're going to be putting up more.NET content and getting a whole bunch of information out there. But <clears throat> obviously, the code, you don't need to start again. Um, there's a whole bunch of serverless patterns which are already there, which I know people have contributed for. I think there are over 400, get, getting up to 500 different patterns. So using any kind of services, and it's also got, you know, .NET is a, a big proportion of them, and it's also CDK, and it's um, Terraform, and Pulumi, and SAM. So really, if you're hunting around in random places looking for um, patterns, these are, you know, these are these are patterns really available. Workflows is all for step functions workflows if you're using for that. Snippets are cool little bits of code. <clears throat> uh, when my uh, mic died earlier, I to mention how cool uh, Lambda Insights is, sorry, CloudWatch Logs Insights is separate from Lambda Insights, because that's a really cool way that you can query your logs. And uh, uh, Enrique was showing how you can look for specific log lines, you know, anything that's metrics and all that kind of thing, you can search for that. And there's some uh, cool examples server within the snippets that you can, you know, search for cold starts and search for a whole bunch of things. So look in the serverless snippets. And then serverless repos is just, uh, you know, a, a gather bag of all the cool little repos out there um, to do with serverless um, uh, applications. And so there may be some code, maybe some examples, some demos that you can do yourself. So please have a look uh, at all the code that's out there already. But yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Um, if will be same place, but won't be quite same time next week. The, the world clocks align all again. So in the UK and Europe and anywhere out the US, we will be streaming an hour later. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much, uh, Amir and Enrique, for joining us today. We really appreciate you uh, <clears throat> dropping all your wisdom. Uh, sorry, I popped out for a few minutes every now and again. I promise you I wasn't just um, uh, getting a coffee or something, but the technology gods weren't behaving. But yeah, Amir and Enrique, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to show us all about Power Tools for .NET. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks a lot for having us. And just one last word say, uh, please contribute if you get your hands on. We welcome any contribution. It's an open source, um, uh, uh, outsourced for, uh, for good reason. We welcome any contribution. You're going to help us and help community to have a better and uh, more feature rich uh, library. Yeah, definitely. And uh, there's a lot of work behind the scenes. I mean, you know, dedicated team members working on this. Uh, so, yeah, never think this is just a small little thing that we're putting out there. A lot of governance on the open source part of it as well. So, yeah, really, um, you know, please take away from this that Lambda Power Tools is something uh, really serious with a lot of oomph behind it. And, uh, yeah, just to make your serverless life uh, even better. So, yeah, thank you very much. Same place, uh, slightly different time for some people in the world. Uh, see you next week and uh, enjoy building serverless applications.